All right, in this video, we're going to take a look at IXL, uh, Geometry IXL R13, solve a triangle. Now, this is going to ask you to solve for triangles. Sometimes you'll have to use a lot of sines. Sometimes you will have to use a lot of cosines, but it's up to you to determine which one that is. Now, just a, a way of recap, remember that law of, uh, so, excuse me, law of sines helps you solve for angle, angle, side, and angle, side, angle, and then there's also occasionally side, side, angle um, under if you really need to use it, uh, whereas law of cosines will help you solve for, um, law of cosines will help you solve for side, 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 angle, side. So this IXL starts off by saying, okay, um, we want you to solve, is this using law of sines or law of cosines? You don't actually even have to solve it to start it off. So as we're looking here, let's take a look at what we have. We have a side, an angle, and a side. So I can either remember side, angle, side, and side, side, side with goes with cosine, or I can think about how I might go about solving this. Now, I like to think in terms of sign, law of signs. Okay, if I can use law of signs, I'm going to try and use law of signs. That's just kind of rule of thumb. So when we're taking a look here, what I would need for law of signs to work is I need an opposite angle, a side opposite angle pair that I know both values of. If I look here, I've got 11 and 19, but those opposite angles I don't have the values for. I've got an angle, that opposite side is the one I'm looking for. There's no way that I can use law of signs, at least to start this thing, so I'm going to have to use law of cosines here. Okay. Uh, and one thing to point out here, guys, you do get double points, okay? So uh, you can get to your score uh, twice as fast as you'd normally be able to with half the number of questions. All right, let's look at another one here, okay? So again, what I'm looking for really is one set of angle pair opposite side, angle pair, all right? If I have that, then I can use law of sines. If not, I'm going to use law of cosine. So once again, here I've got side, angle, side. This is very similar to the last one, so I'm going to go with law of cosine here. All right, notice this one. I've got three sides, but I don't have any angles. There's no way I could use law of sines. So once again, I'm gonna have to go law of cosines here. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this one. All right, so notice I've got a couple angles. I've got a side. I don't, at least at first blush, I don't seem to have um, if uh, any sides I could do an angle and side pair with. However, what do I, what can I do? I can solve for this missing angle X, right? I could subtract these out of 180. Once I solve for X, now I have that angle side pair. That's going to be law of sines, okay? You can also see this is angle side angle. That's also law of sines. So largely rule of thumb, if you've got two or more angles, that's going to be law of sines. If you've got, um, you know, two or more sides, generally that's going to be law of cosines. All right, so once you get up to 60, so that shouldn't take very long, so you actually really have a lot of the work done just with those types of questions, you're gonna get onto a problem looking like this. Now, I recognize it's a lot of work to solve for all three values, but we're only asking you to get from 60 up to, the, up to whatever score we have for you. Um, you know, it's not that far, plus you have double points, so it hopefully shouldn't take too long. So let's think about how we'd set this thing up. So notice I've got an angle and a side, opposite set of sides and angles here. I've got an opposite set of side and angle that I can solve for. So I'm gonna start by using law of sines. Now remember, if at all possible, we're going to try to avoid law of cosines. It takes a long time, it's complicated, it's easy to mess up. Uh, law of sines here is your friend. The more you can use law of sines, the happier you're gonna be. So Let's just go ahead and set this up. We'll set up a couple of these. So the first thing I would probably do is I'd probably solve for this value right here for, for a letter D. So let's set this thing up. So sine 22 all over 9 is equal to sine 127 all over um, our variable D. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this thing out. So we'd end up with... Um, 9 sine 127 divided by sine 22. And we should end up with roughly 19.18, or what we'll say, we'll call that um, 19.2, because it does ask to round to the nearest tenth. Okay? All right, so that's the first side. What I would do to solve for the, the, next, uh, the next side well, first thing I do, I'd solve for this angle E, right? So I'd subtract these guys out of 180. So 180 minus 22 minus 127, I get 31 for angle E. 
right? And then what I would do is um, I would actually use, hang on one sec, I would actually use law of signs again. Now, what, what I would do is I would actually keep my original, um, keep my original ratio. So let me show you here, let me erase this. Okay, that's sine 22 over nine. There's no rounded figures. So I probably want to use that over using this 19.2 that I know is a rounded value. So when I solve for E, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to set up sine 22 over nine, I'm gonna keep that the same, and then do sine of uh, 31 here, sine 31 all over E. And then actually, you can actually keep a lot of the previous equations that you had in your calculator the same. Uh, you just need to make one or two small adjustments and you can solve this out and you end up with 12.4. All right, so roughly, uh, let's see, yeah, 12.37, so 12.4. Let's double check to make sure these answers make sense. All right, so D should be the largest side, 19.2, that checks out. Um, at 22 degrees, 9 should be the smallest side. That makes sense. 31 degrees, this would be the medium side. So that all seems to make sense. So I'm going to go ahead and submit that, and that is correct. Now notice in a case like this, okay, the first thing you have to solve for is you have to solve for one of the angles. So I would start by solving with law of cosines. I'll set it up. I'm not going to solve it here, but all right, if I'm going to solve for you, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this thing up. 18 squared is equal to 8 squared plus 11 squared minus 2 times 8 times 11 times cosine of the angle that I'm looking for, which in this case is u. All right? And then I'd solve that thing out, solve for angle u. It's going to be a little bit of a difficult process, but you can do it. Okay? Once I solve for angle u, what I would do from there is I would start solving for my other angles, not using law of cosines, but law of sines. So I'd use law of cosine once, I'd solve for an angle using law of sines, and then I have two angles, I do 180 minus, double check everything using triangle inequalities, and wrap that up, uh, wrap that problem up. So hopefully this is helpful. Um, you know, this, this is going to take a little bit of everything that we know about law of sines, law of cosines, subtracting from 180, um, and it is going to take a little bit of time, but in this case, because, uh, because the problems are three pieces long, really take your time to check to make sure your answers make sense rather than wasting time, because let's say you, you quickly go through, you plug the answers in, you hit submit. If you have a mistake, it's going to send you back. And you're probably just better off taking an extra minute to double check your answers since it's a little, it's a good amount of work for each problem. Um, that being said, you do get the double points. Um, so it won't take as long as maybe some of the other IXLs. So this wraps up the video for IXL Geometry R.13.